Well, one nice thing about this job, whenever my column goes short, I always pair it with some hooey about the Endicott dame. Rule number one, never refer to the daughter of our biggest stockholder as a dame. Remember, she's heaven's gift to the roto section. Miss Gloria Endicott with her prize-winning Russian wolfhound, Ivan Ortelich. Miss Endicott is the one, not Scratchy. <laughs> Miss Gloria Endicott, yachting enthusiast, sitting on rear deck of her yacht, the uh, Nausea the Second. Copy, boy. I think they cut down giant redwoods to print pictures of Gloria Endicott. How long are you going to be with that story of yours? Story? On a paper's time? Don't be silly. This is my play. Okay, Shakespeare. So long. Oh, kid. Hello, Ross. How about removing that classic Greek nose of yours from the grindstone and dunking it in a feed bag? Now, I'm sorry, Kay. It'd never do for me to be seen eating with a tabloid writer. Besides, I've got a date. Tell Mom who it is. Gloria Endicott. Flying rather high, aren't you? Well, can I help her if millionaires' daughters find me irresistible? I hope you both get homemade. Hi, Graham. Just the man I want to see. Oh, another tough assignment, eh? <laughs> hey, what would the clarion do without me, Chief? I'm afraid we'll have to. Do without you, I mean. What? I'm sorry, Graham. It's not my fault. Order from upstairs. Got to cut down on the overhead. Oh, well, now, look here, Mr. Branton. You can't just fire guys like that without warning. I've been doing it for years. Sorry, old man, and lots of luck. Six bits. The condemned man will not eat a hearty luncheon. Come on, sir. Uh, tea for two, and uh, you might bring me a blank check. Very good, sir. You don't think any check of mine is very good? You're crazy. Uh, qu quite so, sir. Of course, I suppose I could charge it to the clarion, but I've got too much conscience. I'd rather give these crooks a rubber check. You'll do neither. You're out of a job, and the lunch is on me. Well, let me see. Well, I'm handsome. Ross, I love you. Will you marry me? Hey, those confounded mice are back in my ear trumpet again. I said I love you. Will you marry me? Your tea, sir. Oh, uh, I make it coffee. Very black and in large cups. Very good, sir. I mean it. Now, there's irony for you. Me without a job, and I get the biggest scoop in years. Gloria Endicott loses mind in restaurant. Beautiful heiress goes haywire. It's not a gag. I'm in earnest, dead earnest. I've been out for some time, and you're the first man I've wanted to marry. Well, a swell catch I am. Well, at least you're not marrying me for Dad's money, just because he's got in the neighborhood of eight million. What's well, my favorite neighborhood? I mean it. Why shouldn't I marry someone I really want? I fell in love with you that first day at the Clarion. But Gloria, what have I got to give you? I've lost my job. I've got six bits between me and starvation. And people don't usually marry on 75 cents. And besides, I... Uh... You don't love me. I know you can't help that, but I... We'd have plenty to live on. Oh, I see. In other words, you're offering to keep me, right? 
Well, if you want to put it that way, I guess I am. And if we don't hit it off, we'll have a nice front page divorce and you'll pay me alimony. Oh, Ross, please. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but you are a spoiled kid. You're used to having everything you want. Not everything. Well, I'll keep you in mind, baby. And I think you're swell. Your coffee, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a little, boss. He's my column today. It's terrific. Hey, did you see my masterpiece sure, on the... Sure, uh... sure. Say, did you see how the boss took that Don't picture? Don't talk I... while Ted's interrupting. Thanks, girls. As I was saying, I'm a sense for the Pulitzer Prize. Oh, that's what I like about newspaper people. They never talk about themselves. Hi, you Mux. Hello there. Where were you all last night, you dirty stay out? Oh, I was getting myself measured for a park bench. Tough break you're being let out, Ross. Yeah, that was tough, Ross. Sorry to hear about it. Ted, I've got a good one for your column. A Scotsman waited six months for an eclipse so he could send a night letter. Mm -mm. You're tired, Harvey. Have a drink. How about you, Muggs? Any given number. Never drink when I'm not working. Can Mama help any? Mama helps by just being around. How's the bankroll holding out? You should speak with more respect about the departed. Mother has been playing the ponies again. Oh, next case. It's well of you. Oh, you can pay me back when you get a job. Meantime, I'm going to lose mine if I don't get started. Come on. Oh, but I owe you so much already, You don't owe Kay. me a darn bit. Just as long as I know Ah, oh, that... don't worry, honey. You're still tops. You lucky gal. That's all I wanted to know. Anchovies, chicken, scotch and rye. What more could you wish for? No, I've wished often. I've wished for a wife. Why, Peter Nathan, what would you do with a wife? Support her. What are you supposed to do with them? Any candidates, or aren't you telling till after election? And you know darn well there's only one candidate. And it's you, Gloria. What? No dark horses? No dark horses. No light horses. No nothing. Just you, Gloria. Will you? Oh, Peter, I wish I could. It would simplify matters so, but... But I can't. I can't. Well, later on, I'd wait. No, Pete. No. You see, I'm... I'm... In love with somebody else? Oh, that would make a lovely title for one of your songs. Why don't you use it? Oh, Pete, you are sweet and easy to take. You sound as if I were a pill. Wouldn't be hard to fall in love with you. But I'm afraid it's out. Do you feel like dancing? Mm-hmm. Right off the end of a bridge. <gasps> then you better have another drink. The East River's awfully cold. This cutting down the staff's got me worried. When they start saving overhead, no telling who'll be Overhead my foot. The boss's daughter had him fired. What? Sure. To land him. A millionaire's daughter looks pretty swell to a guy out of a job and broke. Listen, they look good at any time. Oh, that Endicott day makes me ashamed of my sex. Look out, here comes Ross now. Well, why shouldn't he hear about it? After all, the trick was played on him, wasn't it? And he's the only one who doesn't know about it. Who doesn't know what about what? Oh, nothing. Ted's tight and... Tied my eye. Harry, how many drinks have I had? Two. And neither one of them been paid for. Yeah, you would think of that. Listen, Ross, I've always been your best pal, haven't I? Yeah, you've let me lend you money and put you to bed. You've borrowed my girls. My pal. And if anybody ever pulled a dirty trick on me, you'd tell me, wouldn't you? With the greatest of pleasure. All right, then. Maybe you'd like to know that your friend, Miss Gloria Endicott, had you fired. Oh, he's got columnitis. Believes every rumor he hears. Roma, huh? I got a spray from Brenton. She's in love with you and she wants to marry you. So she got her old man to make Brenton give you the gate. You're drunk. It's true and you know it. She figured if you didn't have a, a, a job, that she'd have a better chance with you. Any dame who'll pull a trick like that is no better. Get him out of here before I kill him. What a hell! That's what you get for trying to be good, Come on. Come on. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Come on home with me, Ross. I'll come back and get the kid when he's too far gone to notice. I'll look out for him. Can't get away with it. I'll show her.
Harry, we are told. Listen, is that a proposition you made me still open? Well, yes, of course. Well, why call me up at this time of the night? Well, I just called you up to tell you that I'm all for it, baby. And the sooner we get it over, the better it suits me. Why, Ruth, you darling. Well, that's all. You set the day and let the wedding bells ring out. Hello? Yes? Darling, last night seems almost like a dream. It doesn't seem possible it could have happened. Last night? What are you talking about? Last night when you called up and said you accepted my proposal, Nitwit. Oh, Ross, I'm so happy. I accepted your proposal? Well, yes, of course. Don't you remember how late it was? Two o'clock in the morning. And the engagement's announced in this morning's clarion. You announced our engagement? Yes, as soon as I got Dad's consent. You wanted speed and you're going to get it. I see. Thanks. Oh, darling, don't be so polite. I'll expect you this evening. Bye. Listen, Ross, what the devil does this mean? First she gets you fired, then the very first thing you know, she's got your engagement plastered over every single front page in town. What are you doing, Ross, giving us all the run around and taking a walk out powder on Kay? Well, you know I'm not. Well, a story like that doesn't break unless the dame's got a good reason to believe it's true. She seems to think it's true. Well, is it? She said I called her at 2 a.m. Holy mackerel, maybe I did. Harvey said he found me dead to the world in Harry's. Don't you remember whether you called her or not? Well, you don't think I would have if I'd known what I was doing. Like taking a sock at you. I'm sorry about that, Ted. Oh, forget it. Yeah, but what am I going to do about Gloria? I got an idea. Be on the square with the dame. Tell her that you were... Uh, well, just tell her that you were lit to the ears when you phoned. And that uh, you can't marry her. She'll get over it. No, it's not going to be as easy as all that. Charming girl. She does her best to put you in the bread line. Come on, will you raw snap out of it? Well, might as well get it over with. Ross! Hi, Carla. I've been trying to get you, and your phone's been out of order. Mm. Ross, Kay's taken poison. What? The city had sent her on an assignment to cover a story about a young millionaire who was marrying a reporter. Hard interest stuff, you know. She knew the dame was Endicott, but she didn't know who the guy was till she got there. She covered her assignment, turned it in, and then went home and... But she... she's not... No. She's still alive. But no thanks to you. Where is she? Home. She's too weak to be taken to a hospital. Okay. 
How are you, baby? Hello, Ross. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. But it isn't what you thought. You see... There's nothing to explain. I could have forgiven everything if you'd only been square with me. Why didn't you tell me you wanted to marry her? Well, only last night we... There's no one but you, Kay. I swear it. I was on my way to break it off with Gloria when Carla told me... Go her. up to her, then. Go ahead. Marry her for her money. Tie yourself to her purse strings. You're a heel. You always have been, only I never knew it before. Okay, please. Go away and don't ever come back. I never want to see you again. I'm afraid you'll have to go now. Goodbye, Ross. Well, son, it looks as if he's going to go through with it. What do you think of a fellow who'd give up a swell girl like Kay Duncan? <laughs> <laughs> My sentiments exactly. Come in. Oh, hi, Harvey. You say, uh, have you got a dress tie I can borrow? Sure, if I can find it. I haven't worn it since before my wife died. Hi, old-timer. Hiya. Well, how you been? Huh? How you been? Uh, oh, go easy on that shirt. Took me all day to borrow it. <laughs> oh, what's the matter? Here you are. Oh, thanks, Harvey. So I'll, I'll bring it back tomorrow. Oh, don't bother. Say, what's eating you? Nothing. I'll tie it for you. Yeah, I, I guess you better. Are you having a good time, my boy? Oh, marvelous. I never knew how charming the 400 could be, Mr. Endicott. Oh, you'll find us no different from anyone else. I shouldn't wonder. Now that you finally arrived, how about dancing with me? Gloria, there's something I have to tell you. Isn't there any place we can go for a few minutes? Well, yes, of course. Out on the balcony, but, but why so 10, 20, 30? What's happened? Well, I'll tell you later. Tell me now. Nobody can hear in this racket. Well, Gloria, I... pardon me. May I have the next dance? Yes, of course. May I? Hey. Why not? Who's better qualified to cover the story than little Mel, the gal who ain't been done right by? Come here. Now look here, Kay, you've got to listen to me. I wrote you and the letters came back. I tried to telephone you and you won't talk to me. Now you're going to listen and listen hard. To what? A lot of lies? No, thank you. Well, how do you know they're lies if you won't listen? I'm not interested. And besides, I'm doing all right. Oh, I see. Who is he? Jim Henderson, a boy from home. You never met him. He came up just after you did the grand walkout on me. Newspaper man? Uh, yes, sort of. He hasn't much money, of course, but then we can't all expect to marry millions. Well, even if you are going to marry another guy, you cared enough to try to kill yourself. That's right. Forget you've ever been just a newspaper man with a job and self-respect. But don't ever talk to me again. I'm going to marry a man, not a social climbing, money hunting heel. Hello, <laughs> Darling, if Pete ever asks me to dance again, shoot him. Or me. What was it you wanted to tell me? <laughs> Darling! 
Charlie, what was it you wanted to tell me? Just this. I love you. Well, Ross, after all. May I have a light, please? Fine reporter you are. Can't even recognize Carla's ring. Can't even realize that I never knew anyone named Jim Henderson in my whole life. Like it, darling? Well, of course, only... Only what? Well, it's so expensive. But you're not paying for it. Well, that's just it. It was so silly. I mean, you buying your own engagement ring. I'm not buying it. Dad is, aren't you, old sweet? I know just how you feel, my boy. Pride is a very commendable thing, but Gloria has her pride, too. She wants the best, and she'll probably get it. And I've got the best right here. <laughs> what are you going to do with a girl like this? From 20 odd years' experience as a father, I'd say give her her own way. She'll have it anyway. There, you see? <laughs> Send the rest back to Cartier's. I'm keeping this one. <laughs> Good eye! What's your chocolate? Steady, old girl. Remember Peggy's wedding? Yeah, she was so nervous, she nearly cut a thumb off. Oh, here you do it. I need this thumb. I'll say you do. Keep off of them. The bouquet. We'd like to get married, too, you know. <laughs> You've had from Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cake. Come on. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting hungry. Just a little wedding present. Palm Beach is pretty expensive. Well, honestly, Mr. Endicott, I... Forget that pride of yours for a minute, will you? You'll find Gloria has pride enough for both of you. Besides, I made the check out to you. Thank you, sir. Carla? Gee, I'm glad one of my friends showed up. Can you give me a list of the guests? Yeah. Let's see, there's, uh, there's Pete Maitland and uh, Peggy Dunn, Valerie Van Fleet. Uh, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, have a piece of wedding cake. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, Well, how come you're wearing Kay's ring? Because it's mine, that's why. Well, she said she got it from a guy named Henderson, her fiancé. Well, naturally. You don't suppose she wanted you to know how cut up she was about all this? You mean there's no Jim Henderson? There never was. Gee. And here I thought she was going to marry some guy and be happy. I take it you're still in love with Kay. Well, you know I am. I'll never love anyone but Kay, but I'm sunk now. Come on, bridegroom, make it snappy. You'll miss the train. Come on. <laughs> Anything else, ma'am? No, there's nothing else. Oh. Here. Thank you, sir. Separate rooms, huh? Yes. Don't you remember? You once said that you thought married couples would get awfully tired of each other if they shared the same room. Besides, I like it. I think it's nicer. You certainly believe in starting things off right, don't you? Oh, Ross, for heaven's sake. I was only trying to please you. I don't seem to be a howling success at it so far. Oh, I'm sorry. Wear and tear of married life, I guess. So soon? 
You weren't very nice to me coming up on the train, either. Gloria, I'll have to face the music sometime. I, uh, I don't love you. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. Oh, I know I've been a fool. I let you buy me. Yeah, buy me, but you can't own me. Well, you needn't shout the house down. I was in love, did you know that? With a girl of my own kind, a newspaper girl. A woman, not a social adornment. Then why didn't you think of that before our engagement? Because I was lit to the eyes the night I phoned you. I wanted to get even with you for having me fired. You were sober enough when you married me. Oh, well, don't worry. I'll stick around long enough to save your pride. If you have any, which I doubt. You can divorce me, say I cheated, I beat you, anything you like. Ross, please. Oh, let me alone. You asked me to marry you, and I've done it. But you'll never be my wife, get that? You spoiled my life. And you've spoiled mine. You've taken away my happiness. I loved and respected you, because I thought you were a man. You're not a man, you're just a spineless jellyfish, unable to face any situation squarely, messing up lives because you can't say no. If it weren't that a scandal would hurt Dad, so I tell you to get out right now. You're right, Ross. I'll never be your wife. Never! These are yours, miss, or is it missus? Miss, very much so. Keep them. Well, how about a drink, then? Why not? Waiter. Must we have that? What's the matter? Don't you like my taste in music? I think it's terrible. Happened to be the first thing I ever wrote. It's awful. Then you're Pete Maitland. Park Avenue's musical playboy. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And you? Kay Duncan, Park Rose unmusical playgirl. At the moment, drinking herself into the gutter. Yeah, folks. A beer. Oh, it'll take years on beer. The longer to suffer, my dear, replied little orphan Annie. You don't tell me you've been crossed in love. Crossed and double crossed. <laughs> Move over. You too? What's the matter? Can't you find your own gutter? Well, any gutter that's good enough for you is good enough for me. Anything else? How about some ham and eggs? Not here. Harry's eggs are very high tone. They came over on the Mayflower. Machine fixer and tune repairer. If you could only cook. I can. Well, eggs anyway. Anything else you do? Nothing to speak of. I'm sorry, I I shouldn't have done that. You didn't hear me yelling for help, did you? Oh, I know. You're on the rebound. You're a cad, sir. Do you realize you've let the eggs I cooked for you with my own clever little hands get cold? Mm-hmm. Well, still, probably they weren't so hot after all. <laughs> yeah, what do you want? I thought you might like some breakfast. Uh, no, thanks. I'll, <clears throat> I'll get something to eat later downstairs. Ross. Oh, I see. The early bird, huh? Come to step on the worm first thing in the morning. 
Ross, you're really being rather hateful. You promised to keep up appearances, you know. Please have breakfast with me. No, oh, okay. Tell them to serve it in here. I've already ordered it. I'm sorry about last night, but that's how it is. I'm sorry, too. I don't want you to be unhappy. I never did. I will skip it. We're in it. We might as well make the best of it. I'll fix it so it won't be for long. But as long as we're married, there's no law against our being friends. <laughs> You're a good sport, baby. Now beat it out of here while I get dressed, huh? All the best bridegrooms are eating breakfast in their pajamas this year. Thanks. Oh, well, that's not a bad idea. But turn the maidenly gaze while I put on my slippers. All good wives put their husband's slippers on for them. I know. I've read the facts of life in Elsie Dinsmore. <laughs> Dear little Elsie, I wonder who she married. I haven't heard from her in years. Man! No, not yet. What's the big idea? Keeping up appearances. Come in. We'll have breakfast in bed. One lump, darling. Two, please. You know, I think I'll get some of those white ducks. I've always wanted them. Get a pair, then we'll have little ones. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> oh, look, I got a present for you. Oh, you darling. Just what I needed. Oh, now, wait a minute. It, uh, it does stunts. <laughs> nice work for a poor boy. Yeah, out of the bread line and into the gravy. <laughs> he earned it. Don't forget, he's got to live with it. Well, that's no hardship. I could go for it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. Don't think I'm going to let him get away with it, insulting you. Oh, please don't make a scene. What do they matter? I heard what you said about my wife. And so did everyone else. Don't you think an apology is in order? You don't have to take any lip from him, Charlie. Just because he's some rich dame's pet monkey don't keep you from busting him one. You get out of here, I'll call a cop, you cheap money marrying sizzler. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Uh, this man insulted my wife. I'm sorry, but I have to ask you to leave here. I'm sorry, Gloria, about making a scene, I mean. It's what I might have expected from a man with friends like yours. What are you talking about? That ex-sweetheart of yours writes for this paper, doesn't she? Well, yes, why? Well, take a look at that. Why, well, Kay wouldn't... Well, she couldn't write a thing like that. No? Then how did they get your picture? To K with love. Well, I, I gave her that. And the story, too. How I had you fired, proposed to you, all the pretty little details. Not only about me, but about you and her. Her love in a cottage with a struggling reporter. Until the siren in satin lured him away. Siren in satin? <laughs> no, K couldn't write a line as terrible as that. Stop quibbling. Who did write it then? Why, you wrote it. You've been moaning for weeks about living off me, how you wanted to earn some money on your own. Oh, but glory, I... If that's your way of earning money, then you're even worse than I thought you were. Mama forgot to turn off the milkman. Got him latch key? No. You're inviting burglars, my darling. Why don't you invite them over to your place sometime? They could steal tomato, that Japanese valley of yours. Then who'd save me my breakfast in bed? The same person that did it all weekend. Me. No regrets? What do you think? 
I think you're amazing. Just because I took you at face value and didn't ask you a lot of questions about your previous loves? Well, maybe it's just as well that you didn't. <laughs> Perhaps I was afraid you might ask me about my lurid past. I'm no fool. Well, that's funny. What is? Those burglars must have decided to go slumming. They've apparently been here. You've been robbed? Oh, it doesn't matter. It was just a picture. It's of no value. Lovely thing, scandal sheets. You're liable to find your friends in them any time. Let me see that. What's the matter? Ross Graham was the man I was engaged to. And that's the picture that was stolen from the frame. What a coincidence. Gloria Endicott was the girl I was in love with. Stuffy little world, isn't it? Oh, but that isn't the point. He'll think I wrote that because he jilted me. Write him and tell him you don't know how they got the story or the picture. Oh, but that woman. She'll think I'm a jealous, spiteful little beast. I doubt that. She's a pretty good egg. Meow! Oh, you fool. Come in. All of us kittens? Come on, kitty, kitty, kitty. Come, come. We thought you two might like to go over to Harry's and bend the elbow. Oh, thanks. We've just come in ourselves. What, no party? No party. That's just what I was afraid of. So I brought the party along with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have your thing. How's the heir to the Harvey millions? No heir and no millions. Hey, hey, keep religion out of this, will you? Where's the costume, Kay? Oh, I'll find it for you. Come, come. Hey, Pete, how's the songwriting going? Well, I expect to be arrested any minute now for issuing false notes. Say, you look like you've been working very hard. Well, a fellow's lucky nowadays to have any kind of a job. Come on, kiddies, thought. come get it. Come on, get it then. Oh, this tastes good, doesn't it? Scotch or scotch? I think I'll have scotch. I'll have scotch and white rock. Oh, hey, who wants yeah. white rock? I want white rock. Carla, oh, right. coming. Well, may we never get what's coming to us. How about some music, Pete? Come on, boy. Come on, play oh, as your okay. latest. <laughs> The story, too? Yes, I wrote it, and I'm glad of it. Ross jilted my best friend, and I wanted to hurt him. Like he hurt you. Carla, you couldn't. Oh, couldn't I, though? I got the dope from Ted. I knew you'd never try to get even, so I did. And I'd do it again. I hate him. Now that that's out of my system, somebody give me a drink. Ah, that calls for little Ted. Well, well, who are you? The original Sleeping Beauty? <laughs> well, if you must know, I'm Little Red Riding Hood. And you? I'm the wolf. <laughs> oh, charming. There he is. Hi, Ross. Excuse me. I see why you can't ride with us. Sorry to interrupt your playwriting. Well, it's a pleasure. Who's the gorgeous blonde? No one in particular, just a girl. It's quite obvious what she is. I can see that from here. Now, you love virgin muscle quarrel. First time hubby looks at a blonde. And what a blonde. Come on, let's leave the newlyweds to kiss and make up. See you later. Russ, what do you mean by being seen with a person like that? Well, what do you mean by bawling me out in public? You don't seem to mind being seen in public with a creature like that. Well, what's the matter with her? At least she's human. That's more than I can say for your high-hatted friends that have been high-toning me ever since I've been here. If you like her so much, go back to her. Was that your wife? Was and is. Gee, your wife surely can ride. Oh, 
for you. She's asleep now. She'll be all right. Just a shock. to nerves. Thing that could happen might make a man of them. I'm talking about this bank failure in Ohio. What do you care? You don't bank with them. <laughs> I have enough trouble keeping one account open. Well, don't tell me you have a bank account, checkbook, three blotters, and everything. That old man Andy Cox's bank probably believes in toting up to the boss. Like Ross, eh? Nothing of a sort. Andy Cox's bank happens to be the safest one I know. Well, if the old man's bank folds, the Claren will fold with it. You don't think. Uh-uh. But well, the safest thing to do is what I do. Spend all your dough at Harry's place. Who's for a drink? Me, but we go Dutch. <laughs> You're telling me. Harvey? You gotta work. I gotta get out Moffat's column. He's on a vacation. Mm -hmm. That's your hard luck, pal. Let's go, honey. Copy, boy! Boy, come on, wake up, will you? Copy! Well, that's that. What do you think of it? Mama thinks everything Papa writes is swell. Well, I hope the publishers think so. The old bank balance ain't what it used to be. Ain't what it used to be. Hello? Oh, hello. How are you? Yes, Kay Duncan's place. Well, I left the number with Tomato in case the police phoned. Why, of course. Yes, I suppose I can. See you later. All right, goodbye. And you never even mentioned her name once. Bright boy. It was Gloria. She wants me to come up and see her. Do you mind? Oh, of course not. She may want me to take her out. Mm, and very nice, too. Oh, I wish things were more settled and my income a bit more certain. I like uncertain incomes. They're so um, uncertain. Oh, I'm getting tired of this clandestine sort of stuff. Hiding in the bathtub, concealing you in the goldfish bowl every time someone unexpectedly appears. I like sneaking about. It gives me glamour. She gave you the air kind of early, didn't she? Hey. Ross. Kay, I've been such a fool. I ought to get on my knees and grovel to you. I hate grovel. We had a grovel walk at home. It was always getting in my shoes. Well, what's the matter? Oh, everything's gone wrong. Tell Mama all about it. No soap? No soap. I got sore the first night and told her all about everything. About my being in love with you and that I didn't want to have anything to do with her. Oh, Ross. The whole thing's been a farce. Of course, I felt differently after the accident. And I tried to let her see it, but she was still sore because she was humiliated. That confounded Endicott pride of hers. And now? Well, next week, I'm moving in with Bill Harvey. Now, mind you, it's probably just as much my fault as hers, but well, marriages will go on the rocks. Mine won't. Yes, it's a wedding ring. And it isn't borrowed this time. You mean you're... you're married? Yes, Ross. Oh, then there was a Jim Henderson. No, Jim Henderson wasn't real. But Pete Maitland is. Very real. Oh, well, that's swell. Oh, Pete's a grand guy. Well, how come we didn't hear about it? 
My editor isn't crazy about having married women on the staff. <laughs> Must have been scared by one in his early infancy. Well, who'd want to marry a tabloid editor? I didn't write that story, Ross. You know, the one about you and Gloria Endicott. Oh, that. Well, we never thought you did. Thanks. Are they keeping you busy? Oh, so-so. And you? Oh, well, I've turned down a couple of jobs. And working on my play, you know. Well, I better blow. Never do to be caught by a jealous husband. <laughs> do come back. I'll always be here, especially if you ever need anything. <laughs> Give my best to Pete, the lucky stiff. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody. Mr. Ross, you all going away? Yes, Emma. You'll be back, though, for dinner, fried chicken. No, I'm leaving. You don't mean leaving for good. I'm afraid so. Here. No, Mr. Ross, I couldn't. Thanks just the same. You can't go off like this, Mr. Ross. Who's going to stay home every evening and play cribbage with Mr. Endicott? I guess you'll have to, Emma. He won't play with me, says I cheat. I'll tell you a secret. So does he. What about Miss Gloria? Take good care of her. You will, won't you? I've done it ever since she's born, ain't I? Well, goodbye, Emma, and good luck. Don't go, Mr. Ross. Please don't go. Miss Gloria's out, but Mr. Endicott's in. Ain't you going to say goodbye to him? No. I like him so much I'd rather not face him. And I don't want you to tell him I've gone. He's worried enough as it is about business. Yes, sir. I won't say nothing to him about you leaving. Promise? May the Lord strike me down dead if I so much as... Mr. Endicott. Wake up. Mr. Ross doesn't laugh. I tried to stop him, but... Mr. Ross? Mr. Ross? Mr. Ross? Quiet. You wake up, old timer. Oh, yeah. That stone crush you're pounding and wake the dead. Ah, oh, he's used to this. It rocks him to sleep. Well, that finishes Moffat's column. At the rate you've been going, I guess you'll be glad when Moffat gets back, huh? In a pig's eye, I have two mouths to feed. Yeah, three now, including me. But I'll make it up to you. If I can ever land a job or finish this play. <laughs> you've got a job. Taking care of old-timer, room and board. Yes, Mom. I'll write down what you're to feed him when I'm away. Uh, you don't have to be telling me that. You're me who's raised 17 of my own. And mind you, no entertaining the policeman in the kitchen. Say, what do I do if he starts yelling? We'll find out if there's a pin sticking in. If there is, take it out. Yes, Mom. <laughs> hey, that's one of my creditors. Tell him I've gone to China. Hello? Yes? Ross is for you. Hmm? Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Baxter. Well, of course, if it's important. Yeah. Lawyer's lawyer. I know what that means. Don't wait up for me. The coroner says he'll do his best to keep the newspapers from stating uh, how your father met his end. Oh, Dad. Why did he have to do it? There now, honey lamb. Don't cry. You see, if it were known, there'd probably be a run on the bank. For weeks, he's barely been able to keep the doors open as it is. Were things that bad, Mr. Baxter? Your father left practically nothing. Two thousand dollars, to be exact. To be equally divided between you and your husband. This house, the stables, the country estate, everything. Mortgage to the hilt. Mr. Baxter, I want you to do me a favor. When Ross comes, don't tell him that father killed himself or that he left so little. 
I will, if you wish it, my dear. He had such faith in Dad. I see. Emma, please ask Harrison to come here. Yes, ma'am, Miss Gloria. I wish he could have left you a little more secure. Oh, I'll be all right. I can sketch a little, and fashion artists sometimes get as much as... Harrison, I'm sorry, but I, I've got to give you an Emma notice. I've got to economize. Not me, Miss Gloria. I stays right with you. Pay or no pay. I'd like to, too, Miss. But I have a wife and child. Oh, of course, Harrison, I understand. Where's Mr. Baxter? Uh, he's in the study, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hello? Anything wrong? Father is dead. What? Well, how did it happen? Heart attack. Oh, gee. He was such a grand person. He thought very highly of you, too. He left you a little remembrance. Gloria, is there anything I can do? No, thanks. I'll be outside if you want me. No, there's nothing, really. Of course, the estate's dwindled a bit, but... with a thousand... a month, I mean, the dad left me, I ought to be able to make out. But I couldn't live here. I think Emma and I will get a small apartment. Gloria, I've practically been promised a job. Movie critic on the star at a swell salary. I'm so glad. Well, uh, I mean, couldn't you and I take the little apartment instead of you and Emma? No, Ross, I'm afraid not. I don't want you to come back to me just because you're sorry for me. Well, it isn't that, exactly. I don't want pity either. Oh, Gloria, please. Oh, please go away. Num, num, num. Num, 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 num. Yes? Yes, this is Bill Harvey. Got some good news for you, Bill. A rush assignment. Chance to distinguish yourself. The Endicott Bank has folded. The... the Endicott Bank? Yeah. There's a mob down there storming the place right now. now. You hop down there and get a flock of human interest yarns. How it feels to be wiped out. Uh, departure's reaction on losing their life savings. You get the idea. Sure. I get the idea perfectly. Good. Hop to it. I can write this story. You see... All the money I had was in that bank. And now it's gone. Five years of savings. And you... You want me... You want me to write the story. How it feels. Hey, Harvey. Harvey, wake up. Hello, operator. Send an ambulance right away. Apartment 4A, 22 Grove Street. Right. Like it? 
I wish I didn't. You see, it's like this. Now that the Christmas campaigns are over, well, I have enough work for all of you, and... And I being the last taken on, I understand, Miss Warren. Thank you, my dear. In a way, I'm glad it's you and not some of the others. I mean, you're not absolutely dependent on your salary as they are. Of course not. The last thing Dad did before he died was to see that I was well taken care of. In the spring, when things pick up. Thanks. What'll you wear this morning, Miss Gloria? You know darn well what I'll wear, the same one I've worn for the last six weeks. I hate to see you going out every morning looking for work. How else can I maintain these sumptuous quarters in my large retinue of servants? I ain't no retinue. I was Ethiopian, and I hate to see you looking for work. But I like it. Now stop being a sourpuss or you'll get no Christmas present. Yes, ma'am. I wonder if you'd mind if I look through the house. You see, I used to live here. You ain't Gloria Endicott. I was. Oh. Well, step right in. Thank you. My father's study. Goodbye. And thank you. Thank you, miss. And good luck. fix a nice little dinner for two tonight. I might if it's for you and Mr. Rawls. I'm going to invite him. Emma, I want you to see that he gets this. Yes, ma'am, Miss Gloria. Maybe that's him now. Good afternoon, Mr. Bass. Hello, Emma. Gloria, my dear, how are you? Now tell me, how's the new job going? No job. No job? Fired. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, it's all right. I'll get another one. And how are things with you? Well, I'm having a little trouble finding a buyer for your house. I wish I could afford to live in it again. I stopped in some time ago and, oh, it looked so lonely. Gloria, why don't you let bygones be bygones and patch it up with Ross? How would it be if I had myself delivered as a Christmas present, wrapped up in a carpet like Cleopatra? Oh, I shouldn't wear a carpet if I were you. Why, Mr. Well, well, Baxter? I, I mean, you might find it a bit chilly. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Now, you feel better, young fella? Now, look, your pop will be coming home in a few weeks. What are you going to say to him? Wise guy, huh? So you won't talk. Well, what do you say we go for a spin, old timer? I think we better take the town car, don't you? Thanks for coming. Thank you for letting me. And think over what I said. About you and Ross, I mean. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Time you all want dinner served, Miss Gloria. I'm afraid dinner's off, Emma. No, wait. Telegraph for Miss Emma Gover. For you, Emma. What's it say? I, I ain't got my specs. From a doctor in Florida. He says your sister's very sick and wants you to come to her. All the way to Florida? That costs money. $35. What of it? Here's a check for $35. They'll cash it for you at the drugstore. I hate to leave you like this, Miss Gloria. You go on and take care of your sister. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Yes, ma'am. Are you here again? I'm sorry. Has Mr. Graham been here? No, he ain't. I've been telling you that every day for a week. Now run along and beat it and don't bother me. Here, kid, here. Sit down. I know it isn't something contagious. Well, I don't. But I have an idea. It's malnutrition. It's a good job, too. Hello, Doc. 
Say, I got a couple of patients for you. One's nutty and the other's suffering from starvation. I'll pay for the second one. 460 West 9th Street. Yeah, step on it. Well, that's that. Maternal. Well, hello, old timer. <coughs> oh, well, you clever old darling, learning to speak all by yourself. Oh, don't be silly. It took me weeks to teach him. Where have you been keeping yourself? Well, Stanford, Greenwich, Hoboken, all the dog towns you ever heard of. You don't mean they're doing your show? Looks like it's going to be a hit. Oh, how marvelous. But uh, what did you do with his highness here? Well, I took him with me. And what a mascot. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't reach you. I've been phoning your flat for days. Oh, anything important? Oh, I don't suppose a big shop playwright like you would consider it so, but your wife nearly died of starvation. What? Where is she? She's all right now. She just stepped out for a minute. You mean? She's living here with, with you? You remember me, big-hearted Kay. Oh, gee, that's decent of you, Kay. But I can't understand it, starvation. Well, she has an income, a thousand a month. Yeah, sure. Just like I had a Jim Henderson. Woman's pride, my lad. What a day. Listen, Harvey gets out of the sanitarium today. I left word at the flat that we'd be here. You take care of the kid until I get back, will you? Aren't you going to wait and see Gloria? No, I can't. I just thought of something. Listen, old timer, can you say, Ross is a heel? <laughs> One track mind, eh? Look whom I met on the stairs. Well, hello, Harvey. Hello, old timer. Look what I've got. <laughs> Did you hear that? The little son of a gun recognizes me. It's amazing. First time he ever said that. Some tea? I'd love some. Harvey? Huh? Tea? Oh, thanks, yes. We'll take some tea. <laughs> so Ross brought you down to visit Kay, huh? Ross, he's been here. He wanted to wait and see you. Really, he did. I don't think I want any tea. I think I'll go out. Well, of course Kay's a peach. All the girls I've ever loved are peaches. Then why drag me away from a house like this? Because you're going to live with me and like it. You haven't seen my new place, have you? No. Well, here we are. Hollywood's bought the picture rights to my play. I've got to have a house to live in, haven't I? What do you think I've been doing all afternoon? Welcome home, Miss Gloria. Emma. 